You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. This episode, The Summer of Peter Jennings. I don't know what it is about Peter Jennings. I just trusted Peter Jennings. Now, here's the caveat, not trusted Peter Jennings as a friend. I didn't know Peter Jennings. Not trusted him as a confidant, someone I could call at night and say, Peter, I have a problem. Can I talk with you? But just trusted the fact he had this intangible trust that he was delivering the information, delivering the news, working as a journalist and communicating to the public with a sense of integrity. It was like something comforting, like a pumpkin spice latte or chamomile tea. You just drink it and you feel great. That's what I was like watching Peter Jennings at night. Now, my grandmother loved Peter Jennings. My grandmother also loved soap operas. But here's the thing. There was this huge divide between soap operas and the news. I would watch All My Children, One Life to Live, and General Hospital. These were the three soap operas that were back to back to back that she watched. And I fell in love with these soap operas. I fell in love with the characters. I fell in love with the storylines. Luke and Laura in the house. Sonny Corinthos, General Hospital. I got to give it up because these soap operas you could connect to. Um, It was like 90% conflict. If you ever watched a soap opera, it's 90 from the beginning of the storyline until its end. It's 90% conflict and 10% resolution. Now that equation lasts, though, for sometimes multiple years or decades And what's so fascinating is they have two to three episodes where everybody is happy and it all works out and the story comes to a conclusion. And then usually after two to three episodes, people aren't satisfied with that sort of stasis of happiness. They want conflict. And so a new problem arises and a new story starts. While I would sit with my grandmother and wait for Peter Jennings to come on. After watching the soap opera, there was this sort of space there was this, this time between then to sort of regather your thoughts and then transition into another format. You knew that Peter, sweet Peter Jennings, was going to then take you back to reality. He was going to let you know that, okay, now the entertainment is over and I'm going to be able to tell you what's going on in the world in the best way that I know how. And now you change the channel from wrestling or from soap operas to any cable news show that runs 24-7. You can't tell the fucking difference. I mean, what is the difference between some of these buffoons on the national stage on these cable news networks and professional wrestlers? What is the difference between them and the ultimate warrior, rest in peace? Maybe sans the steroids and the makeup. That's it. And what a world of confusion. I mean, Neil Postman articulates this in his book called Amusing Ourselves to Death. The humanist writer, when I read this book, and you should read it, changed my life because he talks about the commodification of information into entertainment. And that's really what this is. I mean, it's reality television. It's the Kardashians. I would even venture to say that watching the Kardashians offers some sense of reality compared to these debates that we saw in 2016. I even wrote my debate teacher and said, thank you so much for instilling me with the idea that there is something called discourse and we should regard it and it should be something that we uplift because now when you change the channels, you don't know where you are. It's like, it's like not being awake or being asleep. It's like being caught in a dreamscape. It's like when you wake up from a nightmare and you don't know if it's over. That's what it's like when you turn on the television. So my suggestion, just like in that movie where he says, get up off your ass, go to the window and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. What I've decided to do is turn the fucking television off. Just to breathe for a little bit. Just to breathe for one moment. And get your bearings. Towards the end of my grandmother's life, I remember her being afraid. And I don't think it was just because she was old, because she had her wits, 
I think it was because of the kind of news she was watching. When she was watching Fox News and all these things, it wasn't that she was just scared of the stories. She was scared of the way the stories were manipulated and put her into fear, the warning levels. And she this heightened awareness and fear to keep her glued on the television just so they could sell her soap and dishwashing units and vacuum cleaners. And so you would sit and watch the commercials because you had to wait until the news started again. Peter Jennings died a number of years ago. I think something else died as well. I mean, you have journalists like Amy Goodman and and documentary filmmakers being arrested for what? Just the crime of journalism. They're trying to uncover the truth and just tell you a story, a perspective through that journalistic lens. And they're the ones that are being thrown into prison. They're the ones that are being charged with felonies. I mean, what is it? It's the craziest thing in the world. Why do we seem to imprison our liberators but set our oppressors free? That's insane to me. I mean, I'm not a journalist. I'm just telling you stories. Come to me for entertainment. But let's not put those folks away who are trying to tell the truth or do it with some level of integrity. I think Peter Jennings had integrity. I didn't know him personally. I think that's what I saw in him. I think that's what my grandmother saw in him as well. And I don't know if a personality like that could exist in today's media landscape. Or even be taken seriously. Maybe he would even be thrown into jail. For more 7-Minute Stories, go to AaronCalafato.net or subscribe on iTunes. Thanks for listening!